Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Sorry that this next part was a little delayed. I'm gonna try to have each part, uh, part up each day. But on this part, we're continuing from where we left off. So, um, that crazy case of uh, McGill did ended. Um, it ended in not guilty for him. But as we saw, you know, there's still a lot more questions, especially after that uh, omnibus was set on fire. So, we're gonna see what's going on right now. But uh, this game is starting to get really good. The Adventure of the Clouded um, uh, Kokoro. That's where we're starting off next. Let's do it. The Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro. Wonder what this is now. I begin to think, Wilson, said Shomos, turning his head languidly in my direction. That there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Is this supposed to be based on Jack the Ripper? It's like a woman has been murdered, stabbed to death? 19 February, 9.47 AM, British Supreme uh, Court. Lord uh, Chief Justice's office. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Naruhoto? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious, I felt like we were staying in a palace. And with all the gas lights uh, twinkling, it was brighter than the day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time in the SS Burry, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh yes, it really was the sort of night you could only dream of normally. Except, when I learned that we owed three pounds um, uh, for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops, sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. Ugh, I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire uh, stipend will be used up in ten days or less. Ugh, London is a scary place. Ah, good morning to you at this early hour. Oh yes, um, we are, uh, well. Oh, it's Strongheart. Good morning to you, uh, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. susatu san is amazing. She doesn't bat an eyelid, even in the presence of the imposing Lord Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive in initiation to British courtroom practices. Oh, yes. It was very eye-opening. Thank you. And, uh, in accordance with your instructions, Lord Str Strongheart, Mr. Naruhoto performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the, te the test passed. Oh. No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Um, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case, already. Nothing trains a lawyer better than pr practical experience. I'm sure. I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended, um, unusually. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for?
the culpability of the defendant has not at the present time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. Well, Lord Van uh, ZX, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fellow, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. I don't know if he had something to do with it. He could have had something to do with the uh, with the murder. That's made me feel really uncomfortable yes, last time we played that. I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Mr. Narahodo, it's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGill had passed away immediately following the trial. What? So he was the one in the carriage. No. What? Mr. McGilded is dead? I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. Well, this guy's crazy with his watch. Um, converse. McGilded's death. I don't understand. What, what happened? How, how can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the Old Bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled near the courtroom. Yes, of course, that was the scene of the crime, which Mr. McGilded has been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matters, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already... The police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mr. McGilded. That's awful. The mass must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. <laughs> yeah, you think? And how could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilded did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. He did. I remember that. He offered to help the police. Well, I must be making tracks now. This time for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. An inspection of the omnibus. Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But, then... Who was Mr. McGilda talking about? Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. British Court. So, how did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Oh, well, um, I don't know. I mean, it was... wow. Mr. Naruhoto means that the whole experience was stepped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, Suzatu-san has such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. Ha! <laughs> she bright his mind. The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? So advanced that the, um, the, the omnibus went up in flames in front of everyone. It was fortunate. That your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? I don't think that was simple. As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. Like I said, yeah. I don't mean to be contrary, long start, wrong heart, but the case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. 
<laughs> Is something funny? No, no. My apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is un an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I have prepared a new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? New case. Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me. It's a murder, and the trial starts in ten minutes. Don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last assignment. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did, did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died as yet. <laughs> as yet. Um, uh, but uh, when it's blue, that's what, now, um, uh, that's what Ryunosuke is thinking about. And the trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Ha. Huh. So the trial's tomorrow, then. Is everything alright? Oh, yes. I'm just a little confused. That's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Narohoto. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Mr. McGilded's trial. Ah yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh. If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. Uh. Here we go again. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 uh, seconds until the court sits. Last time he mentioned the 23 hours, he said there was plenty of time. Huh. And one, one more thing, Mr. Narahoto. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh, um, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asoji. I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, um... Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world works, so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself, and there's another thing. Oh? Another thing? Continue. On the way here on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important that I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he'd ever made it to Great Britain. You're out of time. Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Naruhoto, what's all this about? Mr. Asoji never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attention on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be able to apprise you of the details. How long has he been there? So I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. There's something very important that I have to do. Kazuma-sama, what did you mean? I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we had better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all.
What is he eating? Um, could we trouble you? What do you think? Ah. Uh, um, uh, lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather got to do with anything? Ah. Uh, listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. Some flippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent eating out of your hair hand, you know? Ah. Uh, but Susato san told me it was foolproof. I'm a busy man, a very busy man. Okay, well you're making a mess here in the uh, Lord Chief Justice's office. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying, hmm? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the bigwigs these days. This looks like the guy that was in the courtroom, the detective, that when he saw the carriage go up in flames. And all because of some bumpkin who's here in a jaunt from a country I've never ever heard, even heard of. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Ryanosuke Naruhoto, a defense lawyer. A. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant, Sue. A. It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? It is unreasonable. Seasonably fine, I grant you. London winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable. How did she pull that off? So, uh, hum. Lord Strongheart is asking to fill you in on the case. The name's Tobias Gre uh, Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson. Um, Inspector Gregson. What's the matter with Susatu-san? Does this detective's name mean something to her? Inspector Gregson. Inspector, are you perhaps the Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Miss Suzato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he features prominently in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, in that publication. What's it called again? Rance Magazine? That's right. Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy a wonderful, friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with goods from time to time. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, is Inspector, isn't he? You earns his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not, and thanks to that magazine, my name's now known all over London town now. That's great, isn't it? Hmm. I have to admit that to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it's not. There's nothing more sinister than the man, than the man on the street. People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under the breath, I'm sure. Rumors? Are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head, stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like I said, they whisper, so I can't exactly uh, catch what they're saying, but I know what folks are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying, as sure as eggs is eggs. I get the feeling this detective could be very hard work. Oh dear, perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. The case. So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we're concerned at the yard, it couldn't be simpler. Oh dear, that probably means that's as far as we're concerned as lawyers. It couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. A young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she still laid up in the hospital unconscious. 
That's despicable. What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have fin uh, finished whoever was off with Susato take that, wouldn't you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Narufoto. Brace yourself, Ryanosuke. Uh, you've angered her now. Anyway, after something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. Why would he get tea? So, there must have been something left at the scene that led you directly to the culprit. Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question? Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Barrack Van Ziex. Oh, wonderful. No! Sounds like you've heard of him then. Oh, yes. We are very... We are, vi we are very, um... We are very familiar with Lord Van Ziex. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Lord Barrack Van Ziex, who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGilded told us about him before the trial, didn't he? When Van Ziex stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. This Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty. Is that it? Well, not last time. Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector, that in yesterday's trial against Lord Van Ziex, Mr. Naruhata secured a victory of not guilty. Ha. Huh. And what of it? Oh, uh, well, um, I think... That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah. Magnus McGilded came, uh, came a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightfully say you saved the defendant, can you? What? What are you saying? Look, if Van Ziex could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long th think about it if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? Right, well, I filled you in as requested and I'm very nearly out of chips. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. You didn't tell us about what happened. It was Briar Road you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place. That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You've branded him a criminal already? He's as good as shaken like a leaf in his cell he is. It'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate 53. Speak to the jailer and he'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thank you. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Naruhoto? To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent, you could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So, if I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events of myself, and I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try, so I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? After all... I am your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes. Let's go. I'm really curious what happened in that courtroom. Um, uh, with, uh, Miss McGilded is dead now. What the hell happened? 
Okay, let's go and investigate the, the scene of the crime, and then we'll talk to the defendant. Um, this is where the, the, the attempted murder happened. Briar Road. What's strange about this situation is the person's alive. In most Ace Attorney cases, the person doesn't survive. Um, so this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah, uh, look, Mr. Naruhoto. Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's, it's unmistakable. That men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know. But Mr. Naruhoto, to see what, uh, with my own eyes... They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The helmet? Hey, hey, of course. I have to try one on one day. Well, I, I hope y your Hattie dream comes true. Hmm. I don't see Inspector Gregson anywhere. Shall we see if we can sneak past and investigate the scene of the stabbing? Why should we sneak? I don't want to upset one of those bobbies and be butted on the head by one of those metal helmets. My skull would crack in two, I'm sure. Oh no, an English bobby would never do such a thing. This is the land of gentlemen, you know. Hmm. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. <laughs> in a wagon for criminals? Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows, then. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, 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 no. I wasn't serious. Um... Snowman? Heh <laughs> heh. What a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. It looks a little creepy, though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look. You need one if you were out in the freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely a snowman here wouldn't miss his. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know. You're right. Anyway, even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. Nothing up here. Let's see if we can talk to these police officers. That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps we're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure it's the wide-eyed look of a panic you're so prone to. It does you no favors at all. <laughs> okay, are we able to investigate the scene? This patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true, I can't see anywhere else an attacker could have been hiding. Oh, what are you foreigners doing here? Ah. Oh, um, uh, just investigating the scene officer. Conspiring with that mustache fella from Japan, are you? Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have you? Get out of here before I give you an idin. Go on. He shooed us away like rats. Yes, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. There are piles of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It sound it soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over when I was walking down the pavement earlier. It seems like it would be far safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Naruhoto, and dressed all in black. I wonder worried coachman might not see you and you could be flattened by horses. Well, thank you for the rather small concern. 
do we got here? Do you see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in winter using coal. The only chimneys I, I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. You think some of the houses could be on fire? Not at all. Well, even so, that much fixed smoke b billowing up the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. Gosh, you may be right about that. Oh, a British bicycle, look. Although, the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be written anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them, actually. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet off firm ground seems reckless. If you'd ever tried walking on stilts and fallen into a river, I know you'd agree with me. We'll have to hire a bicycle so that you can sit behind me while I ride you around. Okay. What is this? That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks in decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodging ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right, cheap, but ideally with reasonable level floors. There's nothing really we can investigate here, is there? Let's go to the prison. So these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experience in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Naruhato, you're making it seem worse. It's probably because it is worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. In May 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop idling at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I? Am I a cat as yeet with no name? Calling me by a number, it's utterly unbelievable. Unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Who is this guy? Let's see. Mr. Naruhoto, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea. But I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints was in Japanese. Um, excuse me. But shh, quiet. They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening. Even now, I, I can sense it. What? Who? Um, right, so could I ask you who it- There you are, you've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it, you're a ghost. A ghost? We mean you no harm, prisoner-san, are you... Japanese by any chance? This is. This is. Beyond my wildest dreams. Forgive me for that outburst before, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, uh, fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it. It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown, and here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land. So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damned, dark hellhole was a... a... most monumentally moving moment. Who could have guessed that this new client Lord Strongheart assigned to us 
would turn out to be a fellow Japanese. Ah, what a uh, compassion my fellow countrymen show. To dispatch a first-class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. Noble, nurturing, never-failing Nippon. Uh, a first-class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can, I will. Shan't say sullen and silent. I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but... He seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually uh, has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryanosuke Narahodo. And uh, I am Narahodo-san's judicial assistant, Suzato Mikotoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably, notoriously named Natsume. Uh, Soseki Na Natsume. Soseki Natsume. Let's see who, who he is. Soseki Natsume-san. What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a namde um, plume. A namde plume? You mean an Elias. That's right, Narahado-san. No, 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 no. Don't be so pro's sake. It's a much more refined than that. And haiku. That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes. That's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery. And now this. It's beyond the pale. Suffer that misery. Do you, did you not want to study here? No. I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But... Just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean... You can do it? No. What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no. They told me to study the English language. Utterly unbelievable, unjustly unreasonable. I see. Only the other day, I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on white washi. Man, this guy's really hyper. Um, you must be a man of great standing. Oh yes. So I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. The accusation against you. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Sasaki-san? I didn't do it. I didn't commit that atrocious murder. Murder? Oh no. No, no, it's alright. The woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife. Right before my eyes. Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Oh dear. It seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's... Incredibly, inexcusably irritating, inconvenient. So Saki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's a vital that we find out more about the case. About the case. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to the accursed lodgings. Sure, the bookshop wasn't a curse, too. As I was walking along that cursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat, she was. And just as I went to overtake her... She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard stabs, uh, slabs of a stone at my feet. How terrible. I called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It was, it was like a ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. 
so I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my cursed lodgings. That's not good. They'll- they'll say it was shameful, I know. You shouldn't run away from a scene like that unless you're, you know, concerned of your safety, then I could understand, but, you know, running away from, like, a person that just got stabbed and there's no one else there, that doesn't look good. Um, they'll- they'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Sasaki-san, was a victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous. Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English and a young woman at that? I'm d diffident, shy, timid, unsure. I can't talk to people. I see. A young woman, unknown to Sasaki-san. And at the time it happened... Who else did you see nearby? Did anyone pass you? Regret regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one. Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else on the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm. What conundrum? What do you mean, Susatu-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what Sasaki-san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim, and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did. But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit. Ah, you... What did you just say? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Oops, perhaps I thought I had a little loud... That a little loudly. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Sasaki-san actually come to be arrested? Oh, sorry. He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh yes, she's right. It... It was him. That accursed great detective. He led the police to me. Of all the bad luck, a cursed great detective? Could it be? I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live, with his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Brash, big-headed, bush boy, be gone. Was it Herlock Sholmes? May you be cursed until the end of your days. Herlock Sholmes. Oh, it was... Herlock messed up the case again. I knew it. Mr. Sholmes? Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a silver hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me, this is the police, put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin silver, and, it, and yes it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting dietary discrimination, devils. You clearly had a, a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That Herlock Sholmes. It's actually just Herlock Sholmes, he's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in the te detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known and his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman, me, this weak stoop kitten of a man. I wonder what great deduction process led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Shone's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, the thing is, I was, I was thrown in a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were, that's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me. It's in impossible English. Fiendish foreign film flammery. Well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, yes I do, and I'm fine. The next thing I, I knew, I was at Manacles, and before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear. I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not f fine now. Mr. Naruhoto, Esquire. 
Oh, uh, you can just call me Naruhodo, and when we're speaking English, a sim simple mister is more than enough. Oh, yes, um, all right, yes. They've, they've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself on a study tour. Ah, a student. I have, to defend it a, I have defended a case in the Old Bailey, only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Mr. Naruhado's uh, son. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm sort of a locum lawyer, I suppose. But that armband, that's the mark of a defense lawyer from a great empire. It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, what do you mean? The lawyers, all the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness, why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before, when it happened, there was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I might be, must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Sasaki-san. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Somebody not to be trusted. I feel really bad for him now. I heard them openly laughing about me before in my ear earshot without any compute compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said. And of course, the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong. I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man of strange accent. They all hate me. So, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Sasaki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm. I'll do what I can, for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here all alone, waiting for you, locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. We should be going then, Mr. Naruhodo san. We have a case to prepare for. Can I present this to him? Yes, yes! The symbol of one of our great empire's first-rate lawyers. Which means, of course, you'll stand by my side, you'll defend me. Oh, uh, no, sorry, that wasn't why I was showing it to you. Then why else would you show me that? Oops. In hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. We talked to him about everything. There must be something at the scene that we missed. Oh, look who's here. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly uh, sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been to the holding cells then. What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Hmm. We'll see about that. Do Japanese like to stick together, I suppose? Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh. The stone-cold air of rejection. 
take heart, London at this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That makes it worse somehow. Scotland Yard. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventure of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the police. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that the policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly got the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense his duty of protecting the city. Oh yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh really? First thing in the morning, you know what, what he does? Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yup. Wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did it uh, myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's, that's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Right, because back then these would be gas lamps, and they would have to be shut off also. Um, and I suppose in between all these duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly, more alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have the men kneeling over from time to time, I admit. I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it, it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Naruhoto. Your heavy heart will be my heavy hand if you do. About the case. It happens at, a, at around 5 in the evening, two days ago, just there on the open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's been treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's yard policy to give lawyers defending subjects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. A street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. That'll help. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else in the scene other than the victim and your fellow countryman. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can't be sure. How? Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah, but there was no one else at the scene, was there? It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Witnesses. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. I doubt that, considering that he's um, uh, identifying this guy when he didn't do it. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a Bobby, catching them banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. 
You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I have no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you, this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that too. Oh yes, uh, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Jones. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Mr. Sholmes. Who did, did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Well, we've seen those deductions before. They're, they're not that great, and they get a lot of things wrong. Fiddle faddle. Huh? The man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He, he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble. Ah. Ever seen this before? Oh, yes. That's Rance Magazine. That wonderful publication, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called great detective makes a mockery of us all. If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any of Herlock Sholmes' tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We, we work our socks off, every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. That man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Tomorrow's trial. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean. There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. I wonder why. And the only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals, the violent ones. Master criminals? Natsume isn't a master criminal. The violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely. That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for uh, want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's gotta be more to it. Some reason he's taken interest. The victim is probably someone important, then. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself, at tomorrow's trial. Are we really gonna have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it. Well, I don't think we're gonna get any more useful information out of the detective. <laughs> Mr. Naruhoto, can I make a suggestion? Oh yes, What? what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? 
Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Shones for all this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you going to just ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Shones again. The trouble is, we have no idea of that man's address even, so now, it's Baker Street. Baker Street, that's where um, uh, Sherlock Holmes lives, but this is Herlock Shones, which is Ace Attorney's version of him. And I, something interesting I read about, Sherlock Holmes is apparently in the public domain, which means anybody can use him without copyright. Um, it's in the stories, of course. 221 Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We better try to find our way there before Susado's son gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah, I'll summon a carriage. So we're to have a reunion already. With the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. This is the street map. That's where the, uh, the, the attempted murder happened. Okay. Got our first piece of evidence here. Move. Okay. Show him sweet. Let's get over there then. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shows. He has a pretty nice apartment. 19 February, 12.53 p.m. Sholmes Suite. So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. Wow, look at that mess. It is as described in the stories, Miss Suzato. Um, Suzato-san. Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I... I suppose they must have been, yes. I've never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. I'm concerned how many of those people were really guilty. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears in the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it, the romanticism. Can't you feel your heart pumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Darahoto? Oh, I... I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind, I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. Ha, huh, she's obsessed. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? Oh, her. Hello. It, is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Uh, hello. Wait. Aren't you? Oh, how rude of me. I'll go make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Miss Susato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The King of Bohemia? <laughs> King Willem uh, Gottstreich Sig Sigismund von Armstein, of course. Wow, what a long name. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and take a look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Ah, it's you. I knew it, since Sun recognizes her too. That's her from the previous trial. She appeared at the end. She claimed credit for the paint gun. 
and taking that with you as well, I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defense antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you only just arrived in London. Oh yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea, it's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, uh, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant, uh, yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and yet have another tickets trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Um... Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Sholmes to you, surely. Mr. Sholmes a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here in Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me. I haven't introduced my myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is I Iris Wilson. I live here together with, um, Hurley. I wonder if she's related to Dr. Wilson that was murdered in Japan. Ah, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait. This, this can't be. Did you, did you say that your name is Wilson? What's the matter of Satu-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, um... I'm Ryanosuke Naruhoto, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant, Suzato Miko Toba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie? And Runo? There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. Iris. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it, at the Old Bailey? Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this? Ha. Huh. Ha. Uh, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Jenny, yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial-disrupting gun? Like, contraption? Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Jenny back here after that, so she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock, Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. I had no idea that the great detective has such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very ex expensive. So the solution is to share the cost of a partner, a roommate. Your roommates. I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten at last this year. She's ten. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. 
Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course, go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of Rance Magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on the ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see, and he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved in a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the offer. Yes, I'll let you in a secret if you like. I'm going to call this lady's adventure the Speckled Band. The Speckled Band, that's uh, certainly very familiar. Of course, I always catch one or two details in the stories, um, uh, I always change one or two details, t details in the stories here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. So the stories are actually, um, uh, fabricated a little bit. That was Mr. Shum's first thought as well. Yes, and of course, I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story, some poetic license justified to make it more thrilling, I think, don't you? So, do you mean to say, are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in Rand's magazine all written by me? Yes, on my, my wonderful and very modern typewriter, but all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson. Suzato-san's getting more and more worked up. Ah, yes, that's me. I mean, my name is Wilson. But, what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. No, at 10 years old? At 10 years old. Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. I suppose it does, yes. Poor Suzatu-san. She looks like her whole world is just falling apart. Your deductions just now. Um, about before. Yes, yes, what's on your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that we only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel, uh, a ticket pro pro protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that, you accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Paley. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a pink uh, red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. Ah. They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particular sad expression on your face, so I concluded the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. 
That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I see. But how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved it in another case. It's, it obviously amused him. He told me that he caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man. Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. N Natsume. Now, Runo has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley is always stabbing his notes with a knife, you know. He is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Well, you see, her deduction was actually really good, unlike her locks. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on. That was amazing. I Iris, truly a great deduction. You even managed to discern something of Mr. Shom's delivery. Oh well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Irish? Please? The case of the Japanese man. So yesterday, Mr. Shomes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage, but the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There was witnesses who had seen a short, sift, shifty-looking, stopped, st stoop man running away from the scene. A short, sift, shifty-looking stoop man. Mr. Natsume beyond any doubt. sasaki son said that he didn't see anybody else in the street at all, but it seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deductive, deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there at the police, and that, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking stoop man shivering in fear. Ah, uh, Mr. Shum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did, he's a great detective. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear. I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. And that's not how you that's not how you run a justice system. You know, you can't rush things. That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I suppose it is. But in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Sasaki's son. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, oh, well. I expect Harley's still investigating the scene of that case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. N Nutso May. Harley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson while you were there? Yes, we know the inspector Gregson. Ah, uh, goody. In that case... Give Gregsy this from me, would you? What is this? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. A card for Inspector Gregson with a message on the back from Iris. 
It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Irish. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band, and I'll be making more speckled bands of blends of tea. So come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Irish. Well, Mr. Narahuddle, it's back to the scene of the crime. So somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all, we headed back to the scene of Irish's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued. So definitely we got another interesting case. I don't think Natsume did it. Um, you know, it's, I know it's kind of too early to determine that, but j judging by, you know, how fragile the guy is, I can't see somebody like him stabbing someone. So Herlock Shelm's definitely messed this up. But thank you guys for watching. I'll have the next part up for you guys as soon as I can. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.